Just give me the answer. I'll guess what the question is. If I'm right, I win a trip to the Bahamas. No, they do it on Jeopardy. Come on, guys, I thought you're not in here. What's going on? Okay, here's one. I love it. I love it when people listen to half of what I said. Uh, no, I'm serious. I really do, because that means you're just like my kids. It said, if God slash Allah has no gender, why is he only referred to as he, even in the Arabic language? Why isn't he referred to as she and he to confirm that he has no gender? Don't hold your, your hand. Don't, don't admit that you did that, okay? <laughs> I know you didn't hear the part where I said that this is based on the linguistic style of the language of Arabic that it is the royal status and it works that way. Now, I didn't invent the language, nor did I invent the Quran. Okay? But we understand, we understand that that is how it is. The same way for the plural. Okay? It says we, our, and us throughout the Quran. But guess what it does do? It gives a good test to those who really want to believe something wrong with the Quran. If they really want to be disbelievers in the Quran, Allah is giving you a chance. Go ahead, be a disbeliever. Especially with the we, our, and us. Oh, no, I see Trinity. Oh, okay. See what you want to see. Many people do. It's okay. But thanks for the question. You're asking about introducing Islam to non-Muslim neighbors and friends without offending them? <laughs> Lots of luck. If you find out, let me know. I'll be really interested in that one. But we'll tell you what the Prophet Sallallahu used to do. He used to bring it just like it was, but in the nicest, kindest way. But he never watered it down. He never came up with these weird excuses and some kind of, you know, stuff that people say today. And I look at him and I go, are you sure you're a Muslim? stuff from you don't apologize if you don't want to talk about it go home and shut up but don't come out here and start making up stuff about Islam this is very dangerous it's very very dangerous Allah can dump you if you do that kind of stuff and you'll be as misguided as anybody else on the planet if you don't know what's Islam you say I don't know a lot of stuff I don't know I get questions like that all the time why do you think I made you write them down I told away you didn't know I didn't know the answer Mm-hmm. said, what inspired me to be a Muslim? I'll tell you one thing. I was not looking for a new religion. I was trying to convert Muslims to become Christians. Hey! <laughs> see, what attracted you to Islam? Absolutely nothing. No, there was nothing about Islam attracted to me. I was brainwashed and brain dead. All I had was one thing. I got to convert people to my way. I used to go to Mexico with another friend of mine. We'd go to Mexico to convert Christians to Christianity. <laughs> we did. We'd go down and tell the Catholics, you're not saved, you didn't know Jesus. They got a big statue of him up there. What are you talking about? He said, how do you feel about it now? Alhamdulillah, Bil Alameen. Nishkur Allah, Shukr Allah. I love it. I love every bit of it. What happened though, it's a long story. It's so long, I can't do it now. I want to tell you where to find it. My name, you have to know how to spell my name correctly. I don't know, very seldom people get it right. So I'm going to tell you. Simple five letters. Y-U-S-U-F. Then my last name is Estes. E-S-T-E-S. -E Got it? Dot com. You get the whole story there. That? All right. And you get the whole thing and you find out what the whole thing and you find out what really happened and how that a Catholic priest who was a friend of mine, lived with us, my father, Protestant minister, myself, my wife, our family, how we got to Islam. Each of us on our own way in a different story. A weird story when you read it, you'd be like, huh? But it really happened. Alhamdulillah. How many of you already heard about that story? Anybody? I have the audience. Oh. I'm not going to fool you guys, all right? Something about the recent South something issue. South Pacific? I just want you to say it.
How many Muslims knew about that South Park issue? Raise your hand. Really? Stop for a while. What are you doing watching that crap? <laughs> I'm going to call this and not the least anymore. They said the, the rest of my family can purchase some. Go read the story. Somebody said he's proud to be a redneck Muslim. <laughs> All right. Good for you. People say that's wrong. How can I keep who I am and still be a Muslim? Look, anybody who knows there's only one God and there's no partnership, that's not meaning you believe in one trinity, okay? One God, no partners. If you believe the first commandment in the Bible, in the book of Exodus, the book of Deuteronomy, it's listed twice. It said, I'm the Lord your God that brought you out of the land of Egypt and the house of bondage. You know no God besides me. And then it says, Thou shalt not have any other gods beside me. Second one, don't make any images of anything of God, of anything that walks on the earth, creeps on the earth, actually says, creeps on the earth, swims in the sea beneath, or flies in the air above. I'm sitting in the front row of a church looking up at the pastor, standing there at the pulpit, we call it the minbar, and I'm reading this, got the Bible open, and I'm reading that. No creepy thing, nothing walking on the earth, nothing swimming in the sea beneath, and no flying thing. Now when I'm sitting there, I'm looking, right behind me on this side over here, there's a big cross with a man on it. Somebody that walked on the earth. I went, whoa! And then on the front of the pulpit right here is a fish. Huh? I will make you fishers of men. A lot of them are using that fishing emblem that they put on there. Huh? And the stained glass window up top, you got the dove with the olive branch. I said they didn't miss a thing. Huh? But if you really believe in those commandments and you're keeping those commandments, you're believing that Muhammad is a prophet, not a God, not a son of God, a prophet who said the same thing. And you're trying your best. You might be a Muslim and you didn't even know it. Well, it's not about your clothes. It's not about your skin color. It's not about your language. It's all about this one thing. Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu said, there is a morsel of flesh inside of a human being that if it is good, then the whole of the matter is good. But if it is bad, then the whole of the matter is rotten. And that morsel of flesh is the heart. heart is for Almighty God, and He knows that, then who am I to criticize you or anybody else? We are not the judges of each other. Allah didn't put us here to judge each other. In fact, Allah says, Alay salahu bi al hakimin. Is not Allah the best of judges? So we'll leave it for Allah to judge who's who. But until we can be together again in this life for something good, or in front of him on the day of judgment, I'll leave you as I greeted you in the beginning. Peace. Salaam alaikum.